Today's video is a tale as old as time about a man who bought a trailer. Let's begin, shall we? There once was a man who purchased himself a utility trailer with trailer brakes, and when he got home he realized the trailer was only wired with a four pin connector while his towing vehicle had an RV style connector on it. The man went out and quickly purchased himself a pigtail connection adapter thinking, I'll just wear this myself. But that night, he began to have nightmares of how hard and complicated this could be. Will the main character of our story today turn out to be Captain Thunderpants? Or will he connect all of these wires incorrectly and be Captain Codfish? Stay tuned and let's find out. All right, I hope you're still with me after watching that crazy video that I just put together. The actual point of today's video is to see if I can help one of my subscribers. Douglas Styers reached out to me via the comment section and was asking me if I could help him with his specific situation that he's found himself in. And so let's talk about what that is exactly. So Doug has a utility trailer and the utility trailer does have brakes on one axle, but this is where the problem starts. Doug's trailer has a four-way flat trailer connector on it and the problem with these four ways is that they are not going to support those trailer brakes and they're not going to support a breakaway box either. Now on the towing vehicle we do have one of the more common types of connections. These are seven-way or seven-blade RV type connectors and so the question is can I take one of these four-way flat connectors, get rid of it, and use one of these seven-way male RV type connections in its place and use the trailer brakes? And if so, how? So let me start off by saying if you're simply interested in taking a four-pin connector and making it work with the seven-pin RV type connector on the back of your truck and all you're really interested in is left turn, right turn signal, tail lights, and brake lights, you can do that with a video that I have already created. And that video is how to convert a four-way flat trailer plug to a seven-way round top trailer plug. I would encourage you to go watch that video and then come back to this one and pick up with the rest of this project. All right, so let's get started by putting a trailer on the screen here. And we'll show you where the front is, where the back is, where the left and where the right are. And then I'm going to add some color and I'm going to say left is going to be yellow, right is going to be green. And there is a very specific reason that we're doing that. So next up, let's add some signals. Let's add a right turn signal and let's add a left turn signal. And hopefully you're able to see the difference there in the strobing. Now I'm going to flip that whole image to the side and we're going to talk about this drawing for just a minute. If you look at the four-way pigtail on most trailers, you're going to see four colors. You're going to see white, brown, yellow, and green. Okay, so when it comes to a trailer ground, that's typically going to be a white wire on one of these plugs, whether it's a seven-way, six-way, five-way, or four-way. And yes, there are that many, but typically white is always going to be the ground. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep it simple as far as the ground goes. There are multiple ways that you can do a ground on a boat trailer or a utility trailer. But for the purposes of what we're doing here today, let's just say that that white wire for that trailer ground is going to go straight back to the frame somewhere. It's just going to come off of that connector and go back and be screwed in directly to the frame. That means that the frame itself is going to become the ground for everything on the trailer that needs ground. All right, moving on to the brown wire. You'll notice that the brown wire goes from the connector to the back of the trailer, in my example, and it splits one to the left and one to the right. The brown wire supplies electricity to your tail lights. Call them running lights or tail lights or whatever you want. If you happen to have a license plate light also to keep your license plate lit up, it will also supply electricity to that. And then if you have side marker lights anywhere else on your trailer, most likely the brown is supplying the electricity to those as well. 
That leaves us with the yellow and green wires. And as you can see in my image there, yellow goes to the left side and green goes to the right side. These are your brake wires. This is what is going to allow your tail marker to act as a brake light and a turn signal. So with that out of the way, let's just cut that four-way connector off and now let's talk about what we're going to have to do to get this seven-way Hopkins pigtail to go into these wires and to add the additional brakes at the same time. So one of the first things that I'm going to point out is that I am going to cover the standard wiring for the seven-way connections. There are basically two types from what I can see online. There's a standard and there's an RV style. So let's talk about what the two have in common first as far as colors go and that would be white, blue, brown, yellow, green, and black. And then what is different about the two is that your standard wiring has a purple wire and your RV wiring has a red wire. So for wiring a boat or a utility trailer or a dump trailer or something like that, I'm going to suggest that you stick with the standard wiring scheme. And there is a big difference between the two. And the standard is going to lend itself more to a conversion from a four pin to a seven way. All right, so it's time to actually put some wires together. And the first thing that I'm going to recommend is you get a junction box that you locate somewhere on the front of your trailer. You don't have to do this, but if you don't do this, you're going to just have a lot of wires that are taped together and it's harder to maintain that way. This is a much cleaner approach and it also allows for future wiring along with possibly saving you the headache of dealing with rust. Now you don't have to go this route, but I definitely recommend it because it will make working with this in the future much easier. All right, so let's get started by looking at numbers one, two, three, and four that are flashing there in red. These are the wires that were already on your trailer uh, connected to the four-way pin, brown, yellow, green, and white for the ground. And you're just literally gonna connect those here instead of connecting them directly to the pigtail. So one, two, three, and four are on top, and those are the ones coming from the trailer wire that you already had where five, six, seven, and eight are the wires that come off of the new pigtail that you're wiring up. And you'll notice it's literally brown on brown, yellow on yellow, green on green, and white on white. And again, that white on white is the ground. Now let's talk very briefly about brake controllers. And brake controllers are inside of your vehicle and they come in two flavors. There are integrated controllers, which mean they're already built into your vehicle or they came that way from the factory. And then there are aftermarket brake controllers, which you typically see. And they look something like this and they're mounted under the dash around your knees or somewhere like that so that you can easily reach those and control the brakes. And if you're wondering if you have to have one of those, the answer is yes. From everything that I've researched, you have to have a brake controller. All right, so let's talk about the blue wire, what that's going to connect to and how that's going to work. You actually have a couple choices for how you do this, but the main thing is that the blue wire from your pigtail is going to have to be connected to a wire that goes all the way back to the axle with the brakes on it. And then you have two options. You can run a single wire back like you see here, or you can run two separate wires each one going to a different brake on the axle. But I'm going to use the single wire method in this drawing and for the remainder of this discussion because that is what I think I see the majority of. So the next question is gonna be, well, I've got the blue wire all the way back here. Where does it go? So to answer that, we're gonna take a brake assembly and we're gonna blow that up and look at the two green wires that come out of the back side of that. Those two green wires go inside the brake assembly and they connect to the magnet that actually engages your brakes. And one of the things that most people would get confused about because there are two green wires is which one's positive and which one's negative. And from what I've found, it's not polarity specific. And what that means is either one can be positive and the other one be negative. Now, if on the back of your brake assembly, you have two different color wires, I'm going to recommend that you look up on the manufacturer's website and see if there's a specific polarity. And finally, let's look at where those blue wires go. I've put the trailer back on here facing in the upright position, and I've put a left 
brake assembly and a right brake assembly on the right side. And so let's look at where that blue wire goes. Okay, we're going to run a new blue wire from our junction box at the front of the trailer down to the left side of the trailer. Once we get it back there, we're going to pick one of the two green wires coming from the magnet and we're going to connect the blue wire to that. Now this means the other green wire on that same side is going to become our ground. And we'll cover that here in just a second. Now we're going to add a second blue wire from where the blue wire connects on the left side all the way over to the right side. And then you can pick either one of the green wires on the right side and connect your blue wire there. Now we're going to wire the two grounds together with a white wire. And again, we're going to run that uh, from the right side to the left side, and then it's going to follow the blue wire all the way back up to the front of the trailer, and it also is going to go into the junction box. Okay, so with all that out of the way, I'm going to go back to this diagram. So now we know that the blue line is specifically for the brakes. We can focus on the purple and the black and where those go. Now the purple wire is for backup lights in case you have backup lights on your trailer. If you do not have backup lights, I still suggest you take the purple wire and connect it inside of your junction box. There just won't be another lead that comes in from the trailer side. If you do have backup lights or you want to add those, you'll simply go purchase those. There will be a positive and a negative on those just like there are most lights. And you will take the purple wire and connect that to the positive lead and then use your white ground wire to connect to the negative lead. And that leaves us with the black wire. And in the case of Mr. Styers, he has already said that he currently does not have a breakaway kit or a breakaway box on his trailer. Now, whether or not that's legal is going to depend on where you live. In the state of Tennessee, there are two different laws you have to look at. The first being when are brakes required on a trailer? And I'll let you read that. You can pause the video if you want to see that. And the reason that's important is because the second law says if you have brakes on a trailer, you have to have a breakaway box. And again, that's for the state of Tennessee. And I don't know how the law reads in whatever state you may happen to be in. So let's talk for just a minute about how we would add this specific breakaway box from Brightway Group to our trailer using the same diagram that we were already using. So to start with, let's just move the trailer down on the screen some. We're primarily going to be talking about that white wire and that blue wire anyway. And at this point, every wire that we have on this wiring harness is accounted for with the exception of the black wire. Okay, so let's add a towing vehicle to the drawing and let's make some additional changes to it and talk about those for a minute. First off, in the flashing red circle there, you see an orange wire coming out of the trailer and connecting to the back of the tow vehicle. That is your pigtail that you've been working on this entire time. And the pigtail comes back and connects to our junction box that we've been talking about. And then you can see coming out of the junction box, the white wire, blue wire, the green, yellow, and brown wire. Okay, so let's go back to this drawing of our junction box. So the colors on the bottom represent the wires coming from the new pigtail that we're adding on to your trailer. And one thing you'll notice is that on the bottom, all of the wires that are coming in are single wires, and that's important for you to take a note of that. What I want you to pay attention to is that these colors match your wiring harness exactly. Brown, yellow, green, purple, blue, black, and white. Those are the seven wires that come out of your new pigtail. Now let's switch our focus to the wires on the top. To start with, there's a one-to-one -one match for the brown, yellow, green, and white. Those are the wires that came from your original four-way flat trailer connector. Switching our focus to the purple wire, you'll notice that there's a wire that comes in from our new pigtail, but there's not a wire going out on the trailer side. That is because these are for backup lights, and in our example today, we don't have backup lights, so that is not connected. Now looking at the blue, you're going to notice something different, and that is there's only one wire coming in from the pigtail, but on the trailer side, I have two wires shown there, which makes it kind of look like the letter Y. And I'll explain what the second wire is for, but for now just know that one of those two wires coming out of the top is the blue wire that we ran all the way back to the axle and it controls the brakes. 
Now let's shift our focus to the black and red wires and what those are for. You may recall the one on the bottom comes from the pigtail and that is a 12 volt accessory wire that comes from the truck. Now if you're not going to have a breakaway box on your trailer, then the black wire that comes to this terminal is just going to end here and you will not have a wire that comes out the top side. If you are going to add a breakaway box or you already have one, that is what the red wire is going to go to and we'll drill into that in more detail in just a minute. And that brings us to the white wire and you'll notice it also looks like a Y just like the blue did. For now, just remember this is the ground and that when you ran the brake wire all the way to the back axle, you may recall that we also ran a white ground wire all the way back up to the junction box. That white wire connects here at the top. Now at this point, if you are not going to have a breakaway box, you're actually done and you don't have to continue to find out what those extra wires are for or what that red wire is for. If you are going to add a breakaway box or wire one that you already have, stay tuned. Let's cover that next. Okay, so the first thing is we're going to isolate the wires inside of our junction box that you're going to be dealing with. And that is the second blue wire, the red wire, and the second ground wire. So let's switch back to this view and let's look at the items on the left side of the screen. The larger gray box there represents the actual breakaway box and the battery. And the smaller gray rectangle is the switch. That smaller gray rectangle is what actually allows your breakaway kit to engage the brakes in the event your trailer becomes disconnected from a towing vehicle. So one of the wires that's easy is the blue wire that connects the breakaway box to the switch. You don't have to connect that to the trailer at all. They simply connect to each other. That leaves us a black wire from the switch, a white wire, and a red wire from the breakaway box. Two of these are fairly straightforward. One of them is a little bit odd. You'll notice the ground wire coming out of the breakaway box goes to our ground wire at the bottom. That's fairly straightforward. And the red wire coming out of the breakaway box goes to the red wire that is connected to the black wire coming from the truck. And finally, the black wire that actually comes off of the switch comes down and connects to the terminal that the brake wires were connected to. Now I can imagine right now you're saying, whoa, 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 you have really confused me. You've got red going to black, black going to blue. I don't understand what you're doing at this point, but there's a reason to the madness and I'll try to explain that. One of the first things to know is that a breakaway box has a battery in it and the breakaway box has a built-in charger that charges that battery. This explains why the red wire comes down and connects to the accessory wire on the truck. When the truck is towing the trailer, it is also charging the battery in the breakaway box. And the blue line that comes out of the breakaway box that goes to the switch is actually supplying a constant 12 volts to that switch. However, that 12 volts does not reach that black wire until a pin is pulled out of the switch. And that is why you have a small steel cable that connects that pin from the switch to the towing vehicle. And you have to connect that in such a way that if the trailer becomes disconnected from your towing vehicle, you are guaranteed that it will pull that pin out of the switch. Once that pin gets pulled out of that switch, that 12 volts from the battery reaches the black wire, travels all the way down to the junction box, and connects to the brake line, which sends that 12 volts back to your brakes. This engages the brakes fully with 12 full volts. And I hope that helps explain the strange way that you have to wire black to blue and red to black and why that's made that way. And again, keep in mind, I'm specifically talking about that bright way breakaway box. I've seen other breakaway boxes that have two blue wires coming from the switch and it makes a lot more sense when you see that. And that's going to wrap up this video. I really appreciate you sticking with me and watching this. I would also appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification button so that you're aware when I put new videos out. And as always, have an incredible day and God bless.